Jamal Bang, ladies and gentlemen, and Imam Dadi Abdul Habit as Abinash Verma, Director General Isma, uh, joining in. Uh, Abinash, a very warm welcome to the show. My first question coming to you is all of us have been talking about the troubles that COVID has given uh, different economies, different sectors as a whole. But sugar being an essential commodity right now, uh, how has the season, I mean, how have the last two months been for the industry? Yes, I think you really got it correct that sugar is an essential commodity and the government took a decision that all essential commodities will be allowed to uh, operate very normally and therefore our factories did not get impacted. The government ensured, I mean, first couple of days we did find a little bit of problem of getting our imports from the other states, like for example, lime we get from Rajasthan or uh, some other commodities we get, inputs we get from Haryana. So those were initially a couple of days, but that those got, got immediately sorted out. So we did not find any problem in running our factories, mm. like a lot of other uh, sectors did find because their factories were shut. However, what happened uh, because of the lockdown was that a lot of industries which take our sugar as their input for their products, the sugar sweetened products, those were shut. And once they got shut, obviously their demand did not come. Mm. Uh, then you had the malls and restaurants and the movie theaters um, were also shut. You, you did not find the ice cream outlets or the juices coming in very easily. So that also impacted our sugar demand. So in the last two months, say from the end of uh, March to probably beginning of uh, uh, May, we did see a fall in the demand. And the fall in the demand, we believe, uh, finally would be about uh, a million tons of uh, demand destruction. So uh, that is the only impact I would say is on us. On the other very important product, which is the fuel grade ethanol that we supply to the oil companies to blend with uh, petrol, that uh, since petrol is an essential commodity, so ethanol was also treated as an essential commodity. We, uh, since the petrol demand fell in almost all across the country, the offtake of ethanol was also getting impacted. Mm -hmm. But what happened was, since we are not, we were not supplying ethanol to all parts of the country, especially to states which are far away from our producing points, like for example, um, the northeastern states or Assam or Bengal or Jharkhand or even Madhya Pradesh or some parts of Gujarat, Rajasthan. So what the oil companies did, did in consultation with the suppliers and the producers of ethanol, they relocated our supplies from some of the depots, okay. which were full, to these other depots, uh, even though we had to transport our uh, ethanol over longer distances. But uh, for initially, I would believe about seven or eight days, we did face a little bit of problem in the offtake, uh, but no distillery had to stop. Uh, a couple of them had to run below capacity, but none of them had to stop. So supplies have not got impacted as far as ethanol is concerned. And uh, we were expecting to be about four and a half percent of the country's uh, petrol consumption this year mm. and we are around that number today so um, on ethanol side also the offtake has been reasonably good right so that's an interesting thing at least you know the woos of the farmers has not been uh, in, you know increased on the back of this which is a good thing but do you think there could be a revision in terms of the sugar output for uh, sugar year 2020 is concerned or do the numbers remain the same uh, we uh, see. We were estimating in Isma that we will be producing 26.5 million tons this year. Right. But what happened because the good manufacturers and the Khansari manufacturers, especially in Uttar Pradesh, had to shut operations or they simply shut op operations, went away because they don't have that obligation to take all the sugar cane mm -hmm. like what we do. So uh, a good quantity of that sugar cane got diverted to the sugar mills in Uttar Pradesh. Okay. So we had a longer tail. And therefore, from 26.5 million tons, uh, we believe that we should be around 27 million tons of sugar production. So not a very big revision, but that's mainly because of uh, extra sugar cane that flew into, came into the sugar mills in Uttar Pradesh. Right. And overall, uh, Abhin Ashkar, you mentioned with regards to where demand downtake is concerned, we've lost demand worth almost around 1 million ton. What has been the impact with regards to where debt and credit goes? Because that's something which is a crisis situation then around. Yeah, so it has directly got impacted as far as our cane price areas are concerned to the mm. farmers. 
because obviously uh, a lot of us uh, had already taken the working capital and uh, the working capital has been used to pay to the farmers now uh, some of us also sell sugar and from the sale of sugar we pay to the farmers so it has directly impacted our capacity to pay to the farmers and the cane price areas has increased uh, but since the government allowed uh, the moratorium for about 3 months initially and now 6 months in the repayment of term loans and working capital uh, that did not cause any problem to the sugar mills as far as npas are concerned so that was kind of taken care by the government uh um, but now that since the uh, sugar uh, sales have picked up i think uh, the liquidity problem also will now get kind of control uh, however what we have requested the government the government kind of owes us in terms of subsidies almost about 10000 11000 crore uh, buffer stock subsidy or the export subsidy or the loans uh, the soft loan subsidy uh, we have requested that since the budgetary allocation given to the food ministry for these payments is about 8000 crore less than what it should be we have requested the finance ministry we have requested the pmo also to find a way to uh, give this allocation to the food ministry so that they are able to pay uh, the, these dues to us and kind of take care of the liquidity problem because all these payments that the subsidies that come to us will directly go into the bank accounts of farmers so right. it is going to straight away reduce the farmers uh, areas Right, Abhinash. If I'm not mistaken, in the budget, the government had made a provision of around four thousand odd crores with regards to the arrears, right? So, are you asking them to pay that uh, as early as possible, or is, has it come? Has that come to you, or are we saying that increase, you know, the provision from four thousand to to say eight thousand, another or another six to seven thousand? Yes. Number one is whatever provision that you have made, and whatever claims that the sugar industry has given. uh that can be settled immediately as quickly as possible because they have to process those claims and then they have to settle those so whatever uh, budgetary allocation is there they can do it as fast as possible and my information is that the food ministry is acting very fast on the claims that they have received uh that is number one second part of the your, your question was with regard to the fact that there is a budgetary allocation which is less than what our claims would be during the year so we have requested the government to provide that extra budgetary allocation as quickly as possible to the food ministry so that the extra claims because the claims are much more than whatever budgetary allocation is available with the ministry right and uh, overall with this uh, do we see any changes that could happen with regards to where the remunerative price of sugarcane is concerned for the next season yes um see these things are very confidential within the government i can't really make a guess what the government will do politically i don't know we have made a request to the government that since we are facing a problem and the cane prices are already very high as compared to the sugar prices so we have said the to requested the government that please don't increase the frp for the next season uh and also added that in case the government has a political reason because there is no economic reason for the government to increase the frp because the farmers of sugar cane are the best paid and i mean i mean they they don't suffer as much as the other uh, farmers do uh, the we have said that in case you still increase the frp you should increase the minimum price of sugar proportionately so that's another uh, uh, subject that we have taken up with the government at the current frp of 275 rupees at the 10% sugar recovery we have requested the government that look here when you calculated our minimum price of 31 rupees per kilo at the mill gate in february 2019 it's almost about one and a half years since then the government did not include our costs on account of interest burden depreciation mm -hmm. as well as they had taken a very low conversion cost the processing cost of sugar cane into sugar so we have requested at the current level also you should increase that 31 rupees to about 35 or 36 rupees and if you are going to increase your frp for next season which you should not that is our request but if they do increase there should be a proportional increase in the minimum price of sugar level right and with this so with the lockdown what has been the impact with regards to sugar prices right now and with the domestic demand dropping if that's having an impact secondly you have international sugar prices also which are inching towards 
So is that also having an impact? Yes, very important question. Um, first of all, on the domestic side, on the domestic side, before the um, lockdown started, the prices in the northern part of India at the mill gate was hovering about 33 and a half, 34 rupees also. So 33 and a half rupees in the northern part of the country. And in the western and southern part of the country, it was hovering around 32 rupees or so per kilo at the mill gate. So that fell because of the drop in the demand and we were unable to sell initially in the month of April and end of May. It fell from that to around in the northern part of the country about 31 and a half rupees. And in Maharashtra and western part and the southern part of the country to 31 rupees. It couldn't fall below 31 rupees because that is the minimum price at which we are allowed to sell. So that fell. Now I believe since the um, uh, beginning of uh, May or around 10th of May onwards, that extra demand is coming because of which the prices have started moving up slightly. So in northern part, it has started move, moving up to closer to 32 rupees. And in western and southern part, it started moving up from that 31 rupees. So that's on the domestic front. And we believe as and when the demand, because the summer months are coming up, we also believe that uh, once the lockdown is over, the trading community should be coming up with a big demand because they must have all exhausted uh, whatever they had in their stocks in the pipeline. So the pipeline is dry. So the moment the lockdown is over and the shops open or the uh, people start going and eating outside, uh, there will be a big demand coming from that sector. So therefore, the prices should move up from here on uh, to whatever it had fallen to. On the international front, on the global front, yes, COVID-19 also and the lockdown internationally also did have an impact on the sugar prices. I remember sometime in February, the uh, raw sugar prices had crossed 14 and a half cents per pound. Oh, but that 14 and a half cents had fallen even below 10 cents uh, uh, during the lockdown. But now it has improved and it had crossed uh, 11 cents per pound. Uh, I believe it should be around 10.9 cents to 11 cents uh, currently per pound. Uh, the more important thing for India is two things are very important. One is that there is a demand, a new demand, I would say, which, which never uh, was there in the last one decade or so, is the demand coming from Indonesia. Indonesia had very special um, uh, uh, quality or specifications which we were not producing. So Indonesia about three months back, I think February or March, they... Uh, you know, brought down the or improved the specification to what India could produce. So that allowed India to now enter the Indonesian market. That's the Iran demand. Now Iran also cannot take from anywhere in the world. So Iran demand is also coming up. So these two countries are offering a premium to Indian sugar as compared to the world prices. And if these two countries continue to demand, <clears throat> we will continue to get about 22 or 23 rupees at our mill gate, mm. which is about 3 rupees or 4 rupees more than what the other destinations are offering. So right. because of these two countries offering that extra premium or uh, that extra demand, we are able to export larger quantities. Even during the uh, COVID-19, during the lockdown, we exported almost about 3.5 lakh tons into, into Indonesia. Right. So are we trying, I mean... Do you think there's a possibility that the exports could actually nullify the loss in uh, demand with regards to the domestic markets? See, there, let me answer that in two parts. There are various people talking that the uh, domestic demand for the whole season will fall to um, 24 million. Personally, I have come out with statements that ISMA believes that the consumption should not fall to 24. It should be in the range of 25 to 25 and a half million tons, closer to what we did last year. The reason for that is that we had sold about a million ton more sugar till the end of February as compared to last year. Last year, we sold about 25 and a half million. So that extra 1 million sales till the end of February and the lower sales that I told you just now, during the lockdown by 1 million, those get neutralized. Mm. And therefore, if the demand starts picking up now, uh, I don't think it will normalize and go back to what it you would be the next 2-3 months. Therefore, we believe that we should be closer to what we did last year, 25 to 25 and a half million tons. That is number one. Uh, 
Mm. Number two, uh, we were estimating that we should be able to export about 5 million tons into the international market. When the lockdown started, all kinds of numbers started floating into, mm. into the market that not more than 4 million will get exported now, 4.2 million will get exported. Now, till the beginning of May, about 4.2 million tons of uh, contracts for exports had already taken place. Mm. Uh, with the reallocation which happened from the government side, I believe another um, uh, 3 lakh tons would have got contracted or should be getting contracted in the next 10-15 days. So we should be already at about 4.5 la uh, million tons of contracts. I believe that we should reach or cross 5 million tons of exports in this year. So on the export front, whatever we had estimated, mm -hmm. we should be around that. On the domestic front, uh, our consumption will be less as compared to what we had estimated by half a million to one million tons. Right. And which sugar, if you have to look at ethanol as well, how much according to you is the new ethanol manufacturing capacity that is coming up in India and how much ethanol production are we expected in current year as well as next year? See, as far as capacities are coming up, uh, I don't have the latest numbers with me. But yes, the capacities are getting built up very fast. Uh, but most of the capacities are getting built up uh, with the companies which are financially in a good position. Unfortunately, the banks, if I'm a standalone distillery, if I was a new investor, my ethanol project itself is excellent, very viable. So the banks give me loan if I'm a standalone or a new investor. But if I go as a sugar company, and if my sugar balance sheet is poor, then the banks do not give me a loan because that overhang of sugar comes into the ethanol project. Mm -hmm. So therefore, a lot of companies which are not in a good position are not getting the loan, even though they want the loan and they have requested the banks. So that is one thing we need to sort out. And we are with the government, explaining to the government, requesting to the government that we need to find ways. We have some ideas, some suggestions. We had met even the chairman of SBI, who's the chairman of IBA today also. We had given some ideas and he was very positive. So if that happens, we believe in the next uh, uh, couple of years, we should be uh, from about 3.5 billion liters of capacity to produce ethanol. We should touch 5 billion liters in the next couple of years. But for that, the government needs to uh, make that extra provision or help or create that uh, kind of environment that the banks do lend uh, to the for the ethanol sector. Right. On the production front, uh, ethanol last year we had uh, supplied about 1.9 billion liters to the oil companies, which was very very close to 5% blending uh, mm -hmm. petrol. So we sub managed to substitute almost about 5% of the petrol consumption in the country last year. <clears throat> this year, because of a uh, drought in Maharashtra and Karnataka, the sugarcane availability is less, molasses availability is less this season, and therefore they have not been able to give as much as they did last year. Mm. But some part of the drop has been compensated by North India, especially Uttar Pradesh, who have increased the supplies. Okay. So this year, contracts which have been signed for is almost about 1.75 billion liters, not 1.9 that we did last year. Mm. So 1.75. We believe that we should be about uh, at about four and a half uh, percent of the petrol consumption in the country. Right. But with petrol consumption as well, you know, we are seeing what's happening with regards to crude prices right now, Nash. Do you think the reduction in oil prices is something that could be having an impact on ethanol prices as well? Absolutely no. And this is a question I think a lot of people have been asking me, a lot of investors, my industry. Uh, but the answer is absolutely no, because of three, four reasons. Number one, there is a formula in the government to determine the ethanol price. And that formula, and, and, and there is a committee which sits and looks into the formula, puts the variables and determines the ethanol price every year. And that formula is based on two factors. Number one is the FRP of sugar cane, the price of sugar cane. And number two is the price of sugar. That formula doesn't have any linkage to the crude oil prices or even the petrol prices. So it is linked to the sugar cane price and the sugar prices. That is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you look at the press releases made by the government of India in the last two years or so, whenever they had increased the price of ethanol, they have already always stated that since the 
sugar cane price has been revised or the sugar prices have changed or the minimum price of sugar has changed therefore there was a necessity to revise the ethanol prices so that is very clear thirdly the oil companies sell our ethanol as part of petrol and therefore the oil companies do not suffer because of uh, any 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 drop in the petrol prices now the petrol prices have not dropped petrol prices are almost same in fact in fact excise has been increased with both yes exactly exactly so therefore the oil companies are not really uh, concerned about losing money there because they are collecting finally the same price at the retail pump which they were doing earlier so that that's not a problem uh, the best answer to that is reliance which is a private sector they are under no compulsion to blend ethanol with petrol okay but reliance currently also is buying ethanol and reliance a private sector would not buy ethanol if they were not getting a margin over whatever they are doing so all these three of our plus the uh, i believe in the next three four days or five days the omcs should be coming out with a third tender to look for more ethanol so therefore despite the fall in crude oil prices if the omcs are still coming up with another tender it clearly shows that the omcs are not shying away the government is not looking to revise anything with regard to the ethanol policy mm -hmm. right that's an interesting point and additionally with this the government is also i mean i was reading a report which was saying is encouraging mills to divert sugarcane to produce ethanol and this is for the interest of farmers uh, and they provided soft loans worth almost if i'm not mistaken 18000 odd crores uh, through banks for projects because they want to uh, divert ethanol with regards to the sanitizing uh, you know hand sanitizer industry and you know in terms of that the supplies of ethanol and extra neutral eth ethanol are made available what's the sense on that front uh <clears throat> can you repeat that question once more I... yeah my question was uh, you know i was just reading the report saying that the government is providing soft loans worth almost yeah. around 18000 odd crores second, second second part uh, where to to make ethanol yeah so sure. again, then, which is getting diverted to the hand sanitizing industry as okay. well Okay, so let me answer that in two parts. Number one is the government did come up with a scheme in June 2018, uh, which was an interest subvention scheme, and the government said that we will give you loans um, for uh, development of the production capacity and uh, um, subsidize that interest burden to the extent of six percent uh, for five years, which was an excellent scheme. But finally, at the end of the day, we have to reach the banks. and the banks have to find us viable as i mentioned just now that the banks are not finding a lot of sugar companies viable and therefore they are not providing the loan only the slightly comfortable or slightly um, good companies are getting the loan and therefore against about 362 applications or projects which were approved by the ministry of food currently only about 57 Uh, projects have been approved by the banks okay. out of that 57 only 36 projects have been given the loans so against 362 only 36 have been given the loans as i mentioned ethanol projects in themselves are excellent very viable in fact a sugar company sets up an ethanol project it will get extra revenue which can improve their slightly distressed balance sugar balance sheet also so this sector if it a sugar company or distressed sugar company also develops an ethanol plant it can improve their sugar balance sheet so uh, this is something that the government has to examine because in the long run what we believe is the surplus sugar cane or surplus sugar if i am able to divert into ethanol it is going to reduce my burden of that surplus as well as help the government to avoid that export or the or the controversies that we create in the wto or um, the subsidies may not be required so that is what we are looking at from the government side right and in terms of the ethanol how much is the monthly requirement right now that you are seeing with regards to what is used in the manufacturing of hand sanitizers how much of it is being diverted to that front and what is the kind of price differential in terms of the ethanol that goes to the hand sanitizer industry versus the ethanol that goes to the omcs is there a differential or is it at the same rates yeah yeah very 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 interesting uh, question 
now what happened was when this uh, lockdown started and we suddenly realized that we need more hand sanitizers uh, in the country and uh, we remember that the prices had zoomed to about 1500 rupees per liter of hand sanitizer the government immediately uh, approached us and uh, requested that if we can quickly set up these facilities to produce hand sanitizers because 80 to 85% of the hand sanitizer raw material is ena or ethanol correct right. which we produce so about 80% of the ethanol in the country is produced by the sugar industry little bit mm -hmm. from grain based so uh, the drug controllers were very fast they gave us all approvals and we very quickly set up these facilities because it was nothing else buy two more raw material just mix it in an in an in a, in a, in a, in a controlled environment mm -hmm. and then supply those the only problem that we started facing was the small bottles because those pumps which come with the small bottles most of that is imported from china so what we started doing we started packing in 5 liter 10 liter and started sending bulk into the hospitals now we are trying to do it with the railways also now if you ask me what is the percentage of my total business which is going into hand sanitizer um, not not very large if i have a supposing a 100 kilo liter per day capacity i think about 3% of that would be being used to make hand sanitizers because 3 kilo liters 3000 liter per day is uh, quite large and we have to find a market for that also now the government also came up with uh, uh, a control on hand sanitizer it made it made it a essential commodity and said you cannot sell it above uh, if i correctly remember 200 rupees per half i think it was 100 rupees yeah 100 rupees or uh, a liter or something i mean 100 rupees for a half liter, half liter yeah. so 200 rupees for a liter so 200 rupees for a liter as compared to 1500 rupees which was there in the market i think we have not got enough credit from the government or from the media that hand sanitizer did not face any availability problem in the country there were pp we we know there was shortage we know there was shortage in the mask but we immediately from the sugar industry responded and we produced almost about uh, lakhs and lakhs of liters of uh, uh, it's, uh, hand sanitizers and supplied in the market because of which the prices got immediately cut um unfortunately we are producing too much of uh, hand sanitizers and not finding enough market so let's see how we proceed further but it's not a very big segment but if you ask on the price you ask me the margins my i sell my ethanol to the omcs at about 55 rupees on an average per liter and 85% of the hand sanitizer is ethanol and if i am going to sell my hand sanitizer at 200 rupees uh, that which will include the retailers margin the wholesalers margin the gst which is at 18% um, the margin is better i mean i will not say it's a runaway margin but it is much better right but if the market opens up with regards to hand sanitizers because i think the consumption is expected to increase from here on and that's what people are talking about do you think that will be an avenue for the sugar industry as well yes yes certainly certainly because as i mentioned the margins are much better and uh, there is not much investment required you just have to have an isolated room with some facilities of mixing the correct percentage and it has to be a controlled environment so the moment uh, there is an extra demand it will not be a problem and the industry will immediately respond and develop capacities and whatever uh, we are looking at the moment the malls open up the moment the movie theaters open up the moment restaurants open up the moment the railways are going to run all its trains the level of sanitization which will be required will be much larger and therefore we expect a bigger demand at present we only responded i would say as a social cause uh, to take care of the demand that was coming up to take care of that requirement right. but as a business model yes we can look at it the moment it comes up uh, as a big demand. right let's see now if how much of these sanitizers we will need in future as well that's something i would actually like to watch out for but thank you so much for joining us on the show an insightful discussion we will come back to you as well once things open up to understand how things have improved and what is the status in a couple of months from here on uh, but stay home stay safe from our side as well thank you very much same to you thanks a lot and all the best